Uh, thank you all for joining us today for UC Davis Continuing and Professional Education Planning and Sustainability Information Session. I'll start by going through some introductions. Hi everyone, my name is Allison Morris. I am the program manager for a couple of our programs, Permitting Regulatory and Conservation, Land Use, and Natural Resources here at UC Davis Continuing and Professional Education, also referred to as CPE, which we will re be referring to it as throughout today's session. Uh, you just heard from Ruth Cervantes. She is the program manager for our geographic information systems, our planning certificate, water resources programs, and our conflicts resolution skills programs here at UC Davis CPE. Our program, Monica, our program director, Monica Jackson, um, oversees CPE's planning and sustainability portfolio. She won't be joining us today, uh, but she is the director for all the programs you will see housed here today. A little bit later on, we'll also hear from our instructor, Miles. Miles is one of our instructors, and he recently won the Outstanding Service Award uh, last year. In addition to his role as an instructor with CPE, Miles is also a lecturer within the University Writing Program at the University of California, Davis. So let's take a look at our agenda so you know what to expect during our information session today. We will we'll go through a brief introduction to UCDM of CPE, we will review our mission and our history, and then we'll get into some specifics of the land use and natural resources. You may hear us refer to it as Lunar Program, and talk more in detail about our courses, certificates, specialized study, and badges we offer, as well as how to plan your academic path. We'll go, oops, sorry about that. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Uh, we will go through one of our online courses and speak with our instructor, Miles Miniachi, and then have some time for questions and answers. And before we dive into our presentation, just a few housekeeping notes. Please feel free to utilize the question and answer function at the bottom of your screen and send us a question in the chat box. We will be answering your questions towards the end of our session today. So if you don't hear us answering your question yet, just sit tight and we'll get to it towards the end of our presentation. All the attendees today will be getting an email with follow-up to the recording so that you can come back and revisit it as you see fit. So to get a sense of where everyone is at in their learning journey, let's take a quick poll. How many of you have taken a class from UC Davis CPE, formerly UC Davis Extension before? If you've taken a class at UC Davis Extension before, that counts. So we'll give people a moment to fill that out. Awesome, so it looks like we have a lot of new people. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, for those of you who have taken a course before with us, thank you again for joining us. We always look forward to seeing our students. And if you haven't taken a course before, welcome. We hope to see you in some more classes soon. So a bit of background about CPE to get everyone familiarized who may be new here today about who we are and what we offer. We are the lifelong learning arm of UC Davis and we provide learning opportunities that transform people, organizations, and communities. We have been providing quality continuing education programs for more than 50 years with more than 62,000 annual enrollments. We've served students locally and nationally with enrollments from all 50 states and over 100 countries. So now that you know a little bit more about us, we'd like to know a bit more about you as well via a new poll. What brought you to this information session today? Are you looking for a professional development or career change? Do you want to expand on existing knowledge? Has a friend or colleague talked your ear off about our program? Or is it something else that brought you to today's information session? I'll give you a moment to fill that out.
Awesome. So it looks like a majority of us are looking for some professional development opportunities, which is great because that is all about what CPE is about. Um, some of you are looking for a career change and we welcome that as well. And some of you just love to learn and that is my language. Uh, looks like you're all here for a variety of reasons and whatever it is that brought you here today, we're glad you joined us and we hope that the information we provide today is going to be of value to you. So a bit about our land use and natural resources program, we are proud to be the largest program of its kind in the country. Our existing programs address topics such as infrastructure, public finance, and issues affecting the planning community at the local, state, and government levels. A majority of courses um, of ours come with continuing education units, also referred to as CEUs, but we also have certificates that include courses that do offer academic credits. And most of the courses that we offer include professional credits for the American Planning Association, APA, Certification Maintenance, and MCLE, which stands for Minimum Continuing Legal Education Units for students who are lawyers. So today you're going to hear some details about one of our certificate programs called our Land Use and Environmental Planning Certificate. But before getting into the specific details of the certificate, we wanted to help define what a certificate is for those of you that may not be aware. Uh, a certificate is a course or a series of courses that offer academic credit, which may be applied towards degree programs at colleges and universities at their discretion. At CPE, our certificates consist of at least 120 hours hours of coursework and the intention behind the certificate programs is to allow a student to grow in their skill sets in a way that is financially feasible without requiring a large time and financial commitment of a graduation degree per se. Uh, there is sometimes some confusion surrounding the difference between a certificate and a certification. A certification is a professional credential that is earned through a professional training program or assessment rather than an academic program. Here at UC Davis CPE, we offer certificate programs, not certifications. Our land use and environmental planning certificate. This certificate is fully accredited program with academic units that are recognized by the UC Davis Human Ecology Department. There are three and five year options depending on what works for your individual needs and schedule. We will explore the three year program more later. Students will take a total of 14 courses, six that are required and eight which are elective. The certificate costs range between $7,375 and $8,000, $8,050. Um, all of our courses in our planning and sustainability classes count as electives, and we're very excited to announce that the certificate can now be taken completely and entirely online. Our land use and environmental planning certificate consists of six required master's level academic courses and eight elective courses that offer continuing education units, as Allison mentioned before. Of the required courses, we recommend students begin with planning in California, an overview, which is offered annually each winter quarter. This course provides an excellent introduction to the program. However, you can begin the certificate at any time of year. There is no specific enrollment period. The classes can be taken in any order. However, we do recommend that students wait to take planning and environmental law until they have taken several other courses as it is the most, as it is the most challenging required course in the program. This certificate can be finished within three to five years. If you plan on completing the program in three years or less, you should join our accelerated certificate path by signing our three-year MOU. Students that enroll through this path receive $675 towards their final required course, and we will cover your $125 certificate registration fee for a total savings of $800. And if that's something that interests you and you want to learn more information, please feel free to contact us to discuss your academic path. So next we'll get into our different program areas. These program areas all offer courses that are eligible electives towards the certificate that we were just discussing. Uh, our natural resources courses have more of an ecological focus, including environmental regulations, resource management, ecos and ecosystem components. These courses are especially good for students who are working in the natural resources fields, as they help prepare you for compliance with California's many environmental laws and regulations, and they give you information that you can use to inform decisions at your job. Uh, in October, one of the courses that we're going to 
be premiering through this program is called Building DEI and Environmental Organizations. We're very excited to be offering this course. Uh, during it, students will learn how to build authentic, sustainable, and equitable DEI solutions in the workplace. They will explore how to build an effective equity and DEI plan, assess DEI outcomes for their organization, and develop and lead successful DEI committees. Um, and they will also leave um, knowing how to create a compelling narrative to promote the importance of DEI efforts um, and results to investors, leaders, and other stakeholders. The course is open to enroll now, so if you're interested in that, go check out our website. For this program, as the name suggests, these courses focus more on permitting and regulatory compliance as well as conservation topics. We have courses that cover uh, a majority of environmental legislation like CEQA and NEPA, as well as local conservation practices like habitat conservation plans. We're constantly monitoring new developments in these areas so that we can continue to produce courses that are relevant and up to date for you. For people working in California water management or for those who want to learn more about this complex and ever-changing field, it's great for planners and those who want to take a deeper dive on water issues. These courses give practical guidance by practitioners in the field, those that are working in our California environment daily that will benefit you from, and you can benefit from their hands-on experience and lessons learned. On the screen, you'll see a few of our upcoming courses such as tribal water law and policy. Um, you'll also see our Sustainable Groundwater Management Act and our Stream Bank Assessment and Restoration courses, which are all open for enrollment on our website. Coming soon in 2024, we will be offering a water resource management certificate. If you're interested in learning more about our forthcoming water resource management certificate, please indicate in this poll so we can contact you once more information becomes available on our website. We'll just give it a moment for people to finish. Thanks, everybody. We'll be sure to get in touch with you soon. Another one of our subject area is land use. Some of the key courses that we have under land use for those of you who really want to get down into the specifics of things are our subdivision map course and an annual California housing law review and update. Uh, in this program, we offer a wide variety of classes ranging from technical writing all the way to vested rights. Uh, we also offer a geographic information systems portfolio. Um, GIS is a powerful data tool that is used in many different fields and industries. Those who use GIS typically use it to visualize and analyze data to understand relationships, patterns, and trends. From environmental, agricultural, and natural resource management to real estate, engineering, city planning, and public health, the use of geographic information systems is becoming a necessary tool in many professions. We offer beginning, intermediate, and advanced courses that give students hands-on experiences with ArcGIS software packages and the practical skills such as database management. Um, so some of the courses we have on the screen which are open for enrollment currently are our Introduction to Open Source GIS, our Introduction to Geographic Information Systems, and Using GIS for Emergency Services. Uh, my recommendation is for those of you that are brand new to GIS and are looking to explore and take more classes and do a deeper dive, is to begin with our Introduction to Geographic Information Systems course. And if you have questions, feel free to email us. So another type of program that we offer here at CPE, other than a certificate program, is called a specialized study. Uh, compared to a certificate, this is a shorter term, lower commitment type of program that offers CEUs or continuing education credit units uh, rather than academic units. Earning a specialized specialization displays successful completion of a short but cohesive set of courses that provides specific knowledge and skills in a defined area of professional practice. In the fall, we are going to be premiering a new specialized study program called the Essentials of Planning. This program consists of four courses all in line that should be completed in one year or less. The goal of this program is to give students a thorough overview of all the facets of planning and land use in California. And this program is perfect for students that are interested in planning, uh, but do not have 
years of experience working in the field. Currently, our essentials of planning specialization is still being developed, but if you're interested in being contacted once the specialization becomes available, please indicate so on this pool so we can contact you once that's open on our website. This program is also going to be a great feeder program for our planning certificate if you're interested in the planning certificate, but you're not sure if you're ready to jump in with those higher level academic classes. This is a great program that you could start in because all of the courses on this program can be used as electives in the planning certificate later on. Thank you so much for answering that poll and we'll move on to our final program type that we're gonna to highlight today, our badging programs. Uh, a badge, if you don't know, is a graphic verification of the skills that you have mastered after successfully completing a course or a program. We currently work with Credly to supply learners with digital badges via social media platforms such as LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, displaying a digital badge on your account is a great way to share your educational achievements um, and new competencies with employers, colleagues, friends, and families. Recently, we unveiled a new badging program called the Secret Practitioner. This is a four course series that is made up of two required courses and two elective courses. As we have a multitude of SQL courses in our program, uh, you will need to visit the website and click on one of our Secret Practitioner pages to see what electives are currently being offered. The elective choices are there so that you can fully customize this program to focus in on the areas of SQL that you work in most. By earning this badge, you will gain a thorough understanding of CEQA and how to effectively navigate projects through that process. This badge also comes with some associated discounts. We offer 10% off of your final elective course and $25 off a return course, CEQA updates, issues, and trends. Maybe thinking about them, but can I get a discount? We do offer discounts on most of our courses, and you can learn more about those on our website. But we've highlighted a few here. Members of the Cal Aggie Alumni Association enjoy $50 off of our courses. Note that this is a reciprocal benefit that extends to members of all UC alumni associations. Our professional partners receive 10% discount as well as groups of three or more enrolling at the same class, in the same class rather, at the same time using the same payment method. If you have a few colleagues and maybe looking to take a, the same course as you, make sure you coordinate your enrollment so that you can get re receive that 10% off discount. As a reminder, this is, there is a full list of discounts available on our website. And to thank everyone for attending today, you will be emailed out a $100 coupon that is good for one-time use by new students only and is good for any course. This coupon does expire, so please be sure to use it before June 1st of 2024. We also have some student aid available and people that are standing by to help with these kinds of questions. You can reach them via email at cpeinfo at ucdavis.edu or by the phone number listed here. For specific questions about the Workforce Investment and Opportunity Act, WIOA, AmeriCorps Educational Award, Veterans Benefits, the GI Bill, and or student and personal aid loans, you can direct those to Suzette Odom. If you have additional questions regarding how to finance your education, please visit the URL listed on the screen. So now we're going to get into a quick tour of one of our courses through Canvas. Our online courses are offered on a platform called Canvas and this is what it looks like. Okay, this is a quick tour of one of our courses on Canvas. All of our courses use the same layout to ensure you'll have a consistent experience across programs. This is the home page, which you'll see whenever you click on a given course. This page links to all of the resources and content you'll need to complete the course successfully. Each front page will identify the course title and instructors, as you can see here, and these boxes down below each link to different resources and course content. Start here will include a quick welcome video with details you'll need to know and a course success checklist. The agenda page will give be more details about the specific course, including the course description, instructor bios, course access dates and times, and a breakdown of each course module. Expectations and policies covers our UC Davis and CPE specific policies for all courses. This page will remain the same across almost all the courses you take. 
Communication tools and who to contact will help you use the tools Canvas provides and find who the best person to contact is for a given question, um, depending on which course you're taking. Canvas tutorials will help with learning and navigating through Canvas. Zoom FAQs will help you use the tools um, that will be used during the Zoom live session. And course wrap up just covers some quick reminders of what to complete or request before the course closes. The bulk of a course will take place in this course content box. This will take you to the modules page and from here you can access all of the course content. You'll be able to watch the videos, download course slides or the course reader, participate in discussions, complete any assignments and quizzes, and access the live session. Each lecture recording includes the runtime so you can know how much time to budget for each module. You can just click the link and watch the video and click play. You can pause, rewind, or skip ahead so you don't need to sit through the module in its entirety. Some courses may have course readers that you'll need to access or have open while watching the module, so make sure to check for each course. The course reader or agenda will be provided in this getting started module, so make sure you have that open. Course slides and written content are usually downloadable, but the course lecture videos are not. Many courses will include supplemental reading materials or links that you can access after the course to use in your day-to-day -day work or to review after the course closes. Those supplemental materials will be provided at the, on the last module below all of the other course content. The live session can be accessed from the modules page or by clicking Zoom in the left-hand navigation toolbar. When you navigate to the Zoom page, you'll see a live session link um, given for each time. This course does not currently have a live session link scheduled, but there will be a link here um, for any course you may take. And this concludes our quick Canvas tour. Thanks for joining us and we look forward to seeing you in class. Okay, this is a quick tour. Well, um, so one of the biggest benefits we've seen from this format of online courses is the ability to rewatch lectures. Some of our courses cover complex topics like CEQA and being able to revisit the videos really helps students to absorb the material. So here on the screen are um, just a sampling of what our students are saying about our online courses. So now we're going to hear from Miles Miyachi, our instructor spotlight. As I mentioned earlier, Miles is an instructor here at CPE, and he currently won our Outstanding Service Award last year in 2022. Miles lectures on our open enrollment courses, and he has also helped develop customized writing courses for some of our contracted clients as well. Hello, Miles. Thank you for joining us. Sorry, rookie move there. I was muted. Great to be <laughs> here. Thank you. Well, Miles, can you just share a little bit about your professional background for the students here today? I sure can. So I teach uh, professional and technical writing full time at UC Davis. And then I also work with outside consulting clients, um, uh, some of my clients uh, for professional uh, writing training and professional editing include uh, state water boards, Department of Pesticide Regulation, uh, Fish and California Fish and Wildlife, etc. And I'm so excited to uh, now for trying to remember how many years in a row it is, I'd have to ask Monica, I've uh, been teaching for CPE and doing the open enrollment classes, uh, particularly this uh, writing for planners, engineers, and policymakers that we have coming up, which is uh, one of my favorites. And what do you enjoy most about working in your field? I have to say, because I have a, a foot in, in both camps, it's really interesting to compare teaching, writing, and academia. Uh, to writing in, in the real world with professionals, and it's a huge difference, right? Um, I enjoy the passion and the enthusiasm and the commitment that the individuals have to their particular fields. I work with uh, city and county and regional planners. I work with engineers. I work with environmental scientists, um, and they each have a different contribution to the make uh, to make to the ongoing project, right? And the the commitment and the knowledge that they bring uh, is really uh, uh, refreshing. And I always learn a great deal from them. So I can help them to tailor how they present that information to be clear and concise, um, help get the desired outcome, and they bring the expertise. And so it's a really, um, I like the synergy of that working relationship. And they're just great groups of people to work with. And you mentioned your course a moment ago. Can you tell us a little bit about it? It's called Writing for Planners, Engineers, and Policymakers. What can students expect to learn from your class? 
Why is this important? So uh, if you're dealing with any kind of a, a long-term planning project, uh, uh, city, county, regional, or even in some cases, you know, statewide or state level projects, you're going to have stakeholders from private industry, you're going to have consultants, you're going to have uh, environmental uh, uh, scientists who are studying impact, um, you're going to have transportation experts, you're going to have uh, civil engineers and structural engineers and folks from construction management. So um, in all of those uh, long to longer term projects, notice that you've got all these different stakeholders with a different uh, a piece to contribute and different level of expertise. So you can immediately uh, uh, tell that communication between all these different parties is crucial, right? Um, communication is the number one most in-demand soft skill according to HR departments and upper and middle managers. Um, and it's a crucial aspect to teamwork. So what we focus on in this class is clear, concise communication using plain language, because so often when we're part of these planning projects, uh, it requires us to contribute our expertise, but also uh, um, detail our expertise to people that are not experts, that are not in our same wheelhouse. So we'll uh, look at best practices from overall organization and formatting of a document, paragraph uh, structure, even sentence level practices that will help you be clear, concise, easily understood to be a, a valued member of the team. And unlike a lot of writing classes, um, you know, fortunately, I can use redacted material from clients I've had. It's not sort of, hey, here's a, you know, a generic sentence from an a English textbook to, you know, demonstrate what we're talking about. We use real excerpts and real documents from the field, and students have an opportunity to see sort of before and after examples and to try their hand at revising and, and crafting uh, paragraphs and sentences so they get a feel for, oh, there is a clearer, more concise way to convey this. So we keep it real boots on the ground. Thank you, Miles. And now that we know why it's important, what kind of student would this information be best for? Who would benefit from taking this class? So anyone that in any way is part of any of those groups of stakeholders that are uh, participating in those municipal or county level or regional or state level uh, long-term planning projects, right? Uh, if you're a consultant coming from a uh, private sector, if you are working for a, uh, a local or county or state uh, agency where you're doing impact reports or you are um, uh, uh, in charge of the municipal aspects of those projects. Um, if you're an engineer, if you're an environmental scientist, if you're a city or county planner or work for a planning department or office. And I would say uh, it's also beneficial to either folks who maybe they struggle a bit with writing or feel it's not their strong suit and they want to improve, or folks that are already pretty um, advanced in that area or feel pretty self-confident in it, but they just want to brush up, right? Um, because we don't often get that once we're out of the academy, right? Uh, sometimes the brush up is getting redlined on the real doc going out and it's super high stakes and it's nice to have a low stakes environment to practice some of this stuff before you're submitting it officially. So I think at whatever level you're at too, it's really useful. Well, thank you so much, Miles, for coming on and speaking today. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your day um, to share a little bit about yourself and about your upcoming class. Um, for those of you who might be interested, Miles, this next class is going to run in June. Um, and we have another section scheduled for October. So if June doesn't work for you, it's a little too soon, you can join him in his class in October. And those offerings are available now to enroll through our website. Um, Miles, you're welcome to stay on the call if you'd like, but if not, I will see you in a couple of weeks. Okay. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Great to learn a little bit more about what everyone's up to. So now we're going to move on to our next segment, which is going to be questions and answers. Some of you have been dropping some questions in the chat as we've gone along, so we're going to take this time to address those. If you have any additional questions, now would be the time. Pop those into the questions and answers box or go ahead and drop them directly into the chat and we will sort of work through them as they come in. One of the first questions that I noticed is, um, are these programs appropriate for non-California practitioners? Uh, it depends on the course and it depends on the program. For example, our CEQA practitioner um, program is for the California Environmental Quality Act. If you're not working in California, don't know how relevant that's going to be to your work. You'd probably want a program more related to NEPA. 
um, but we do offer NEPA classes. So I would say you definitely need to go into each course, read the description. If the course is more California geared, that is generally indicated in the description. So you can figure out if it's going to be a, a good fit for you. Ruth, anything to add there? We had some students who were requesting um, to get a copy of the slides. If you'd like a copy of the slides, on one of the next slides, we are going to be putting our contact information. You can go ahead and email us directly and I'd be happy to share something with you. We are going to be sending out a recording, um, a copy of the recording so that you can rewatch this. But if for some reason you need slides maybe to present to an employer, um, we can get you those in a PDF form. Just request them individually, please. We have another question that just came up. What is the duration of each course? That is a great question. We have a couple different types of classes. I would say the majority of the courses that offer continuing education units are what we call quote one day classes. Uh, there are 6.5 hours of content that you have three days to review that end in a live session. We also have some two day classes. Um, quote, that are usually open for a week to two weeks, depending on the amount of content. Um, and then some of our academic classes are a lot longer. Some last for five weeks, um, because in order to supply students with academic units, we need we have a certain threshold of hours that we have to hit of content. Um, so those classes are a little bit longer in order to get you those academic units. Um, but if you're interested in learning the length of a specific class, all you need to do is visit our website, click on the class, it'll have the duration the days that it's gonna be open on campus, and then it'll have the live session days and hours. So you can figure out what the exact time is you need to be for that live session. And then the rest of the content you can sort of move through at your own pace uh, while we're viewing it in campus. Yeah, and just a quick uh, add on to that. If you have any questions about a specific course, if you're confused or anything, feel free to email us. We are happy to help you. We have another question in the chat. Um, are the course syllabi available? So we do for the academic classes, there are detailed course syllabi. Um, those are provided when you join the class. Um, for the non-academic classes that offer continuing education units, we provide agendas. They're a little bit less detailed. They just don't include information on our grading schemas and different things as the classes aren't graded. It's really just those classes are attendance based. You must attend a class, review the content and go to the live session in order to get the credits. Um, if you are interested in the content of a specific course and you wanna learn more, um, you can reach out to us via email. We'd be happy to chat about you, uh, provide you with what information we can from the syllabus um, and just give you details on what is gonna be covered. Um, for specific classes. So check out our email on one of the next slides and reach out to us if you have questions. Um, how many academic credits does the full certificate program provide specifically um, to transfer into Davis programs? So there are six um, academic classes that offer the academic credits. I don't have the exact number in front of me, Andrew, but I can email you a link. Um, our website has all the information about the certificate. It has the academic credits for each individual required class. Um, and then the continuing education units that you would get for your electives would vary based off of the length of the electives and the different electives you wanted to take. Some of those are what we call the one days. Some of those are called the two days. So the continuing education units vary. For those of you that are interested in using the academic units provided by our land use planning certificate, those are transferable into other programs like a bachelor's or master's. They are more higher level master's level quote unquote classes, um, but it is at the discretion of whatever university you are applying to if they are going to accept those credits. Generally what they look for is they wanna make sure that the courses that are you earned academic credits from us have enough overlap with the classes that are on 
their program. So they want to make sure that you're still learning the information that you needed to learn. So that's why it's at their discretion if they would like to accept it. If you are curious of if our classes would be accepted to another program, what you would want to do is reach out to that program representative, give them the information on our classes and see if that would be transferable. Um, Martin, as the continuing education um, division, we are not able to offer degree programs. We offer certificate programs. Um, UC Davis has matriculated students um, that offers degree programs, but anyone can take our classes. You don't have to apply to get into this program. Um, so that's why it is not a degree, it is a certificate, and it can be a stepping stone towards a degree. Like I said, you can use those academic units and apply it towards a future degree. But this is an option for someone who wants um, more of a lower commitment. Um, it's still a lot of work, uh, but you can get in without having to go through the traditional application applying to a college. We're going to give you a few more moments for questions, and then we're going to provide you with our contact information. So if you have additional questions, if something comes up later, if you want to speak in more detail um, versus just dropping a question in the chat, we can schedule meetings, 15-minute calls um, to answer your questions. Uh, and give you all the details to figure out if any of our programs would be a good fit for you because we wanna make sure that um, this will be the good stepping stone to get you um, to where you wanna get in your career. So if you wanna make sure that this is the right fit, you can always reach out to schedule a meeting. In the uh, chat. We have one more question from Andrew. Um, is payment due upfront or is it charged class by class? For our programs, um, it is charged. So for our planning certificate, you go, you pay class by class. So you enroll in individual classes and you pay as you go over the three to five years. Um, so you can sort of budget based off of what order you wanna take your classes in as they can be taken in any order um, over that three to five year period. For our secret practitioner program, um, if you want to get the associated discounts for that program, you pay upfront. And if you'd prefer to pay class by class, you're more than welcome to do that. You can still earn the badge at the end of the program. You just wouldn't get any of the associated discounts. Um, we have another question. Do you have to sign up for the program or can you take it class by class? You can definitely take it class by class. I would just recommend notifying the program representative that you are pursuing the certificate. This way we can give you important information about classes that are being moved or rescheduled that you might be interested in. We can send you updates on your progress and track it with you. So it's a little bit less work for you as it can be taken over a series of years. So it's a great, um, it's great to get in contact with us, even if you're not interested in signing up for the three-year MOU. For the planning certificate, if you do want those associated discounts for the three-year program, you do need to sign that um, letter of intent or the MOU uh, before you finish your first class. So if you want those associated discounts, yes, you do need to sign up. Or if you are fine with no discounts and just want to take it at your own pace, no need to sign up, but please let us know so we can help you through as best we can. Ruth, we have a question um, about the water resource management certificate and when it might become available. It's coming soon, um, but we're looking to target a launch in winter of 2024. So this coming January is when we're looking for that. Any other questions? Oh, just had another question. Um, if we miss the three-year goal, is there a penalty or do we simply lose the discount? That's a really good question, Judy. Thank you for bringing that up. There is no penalty if you sign up for the three years. Um, if you sign the three-year MOU and the letter of intent to complete the program in under three years to get the associated discounts, and for some reason you are unable to do that, there is no penalty. You would just simply lose the discount and you would be bumped to the five-year track. So honestly, I would say anyone interested in pursuing the program should sign the MOU just to save yourself some money. 
um, it never hurts and you would just be bumped to the five year. Um, we have another question. How do we contact someone in the case of technical difficulties in Canvas? Ex um, examples of a online crash, freeze, or glitch. Um, so there is, uh, if you notice in the Canvas tutorial, there is a section on the homepage that has who to contact. Um, there's also a Canvas technical support. If you're in a class in Canvas, you should have been receiving emails from the program manager notifying you of your class is coming up, you're about a week away, your class is opened, please go and log on. I would say one of the fastest things to do is just reach out to the program manager for your class, email them directly. We can help with getting you in contact with the right person for a technical glitch. We can help with getting you a temporary password from our IT. We are constantly monitoring our emails, especially when we have courses going on so we can answer your questions as quickly as possible. So I would say, we are the best people to reach out to, but there are other resources, like I mentioned, in Canvas um, on the homepage that you can read about. Any other questions? All right, we'll move forward to our last information. Unless, Ellie, do you have anything else to contribute? Sounds good. Let's move on. Okay, perfect. So we have a last poll for you. Um, we're going to give you a moment to go ahead and fill it out. What are your next steps? Still getting people filling that out, so just sit tight for a moment. All right, so for those of you that are ready to start, that's fantastic because our classes are ready and open for enrollment for summer and for fall and our current quarter. Um, for those of you that need some time to think about it, that's 100% understandable. It's a big decision. Let us know if you have some questions that might come up for you. And if you're not sure if our programs meet your needs, they may not, our programs may not be the right fit for everyone's needs. Let us know what information you need to make your decision or schedule an appointment to talk it through. Uh, if some of you have some lingering questions, perfect timing. We're here to answer those for you. So here's that contact information we've been talking about. Um, I also went ahead and dropped it in the chat if it's easier to copy and paste, um, but you can reach out to our general email with any questions. That email goes to Ruth and myself, so we will determine who is going to be best fit to answer those questions and get back to you as quickly as possible. We also have a Calendly link there. The Calendly link is intended for you to schedule 15-minute calls either via the phone or Zoom. So if you want to jump into um, some of those more personal questions to determine whether this is a good fit. Um, Calendly is a great way to do that if you'd prefer to speak um, with someone voice to voice. <laughs> oh, and we also have our Facebook page on there. Um, we're always posting about upcoming classes, interesting articles. It's just a really fun page to follow um, if you'd like to like us over there. Remember to check your emails for that coupon code. Thanks, everybody.